to give you a little backstory on this, um, I've been doing this a long time, 15 years or so, and I can't tell you how many times when I was rehabbing and flipping, um, an appraisal will come back or would come back low on the back end. And that's the most frustrating thing in the world, right? You put all this time into rehabbing the property, all this money, you're paying um, interest on hard money or whatever, whatever your situation is. And for that appraisal to come back, you know, 15K lower, and now that buyer asking for a price reduction just is very, very hard. So we're going to dive into um, what happens when an appraisal does come back in low, because believe me, if it hasn't happened to you yet, it will happen to you. Uh, here are the few points we're going to be few points we're going to be covering today. So why does an appraisal come back low? How to prepare for an appraisal? And then lastly, how to rebuttal an appraisal. And I've got the man, the myth, the legend on, uh, Frank Montro. Thank you very much, Frank, for being on. Uh, Frank has been doing this a very long time, 30 plus years. So um, I'm just going to let him take it away from here. All right. Fire away, Frank. Okay, great. Okay. So, you know, there's, a, there's several reasons why appraisals come back low. Uh, not, sometimes it's the seller's fault. And I, I've got clients that think that. You know, they their property because they did a little extra work is is worth an extra thirty, forty, fifty thousand more. So uh, let's we're going to put that aside. Just touch on it. Just say you know, just make sure you're realistic with your pricing. Um, and some uh, some investors aren't, or some investors will get emotional because they they need to make a certain profit. So rather than basing it on the comps, make sure that you actually base it on data. And don't base it on, uh, well, I need to get X amount of return. I don't care what the comps are. I don't care what the, the, the facts are. Um, it, it's, it, it's all about facts when it comes to and data, when it comes to appraisers. So we're going to show you how to, um, um, you know, how, how to um, uh, help give yourself a shot at, at getting the, uh, the price that you want. Um, if, I another, could, if I could, chime, can I chime in really quick? Sure. It, so you said data, right? So it's not based on emotion, right? So exactly. it's not based on. Well, I think it's worth this, so that's what it should appraise out for, right? And usually, usually that's because people, um, you know, people allow their greed to get involved, and so they, you know, it, it, I, I hear it all the time. I'll, I'll hear we start off when we buy the property. You know, when somebody buys a property, they're like. And not everybody, but some some investors are, uh, uh, will go will say to me, "Oh, the, did you see this house I bought? It's kind of a wreck, and it's going to be a lot. You know, I hope I can get X amount of dollars." Then the second it closes, "Oh my gosh, did you see the house that I bought? And this is the Taj Mahal, <laughs> you know." You know, so all of a sudden it goes from zero to hero uh, overnight once the once the deed exchanges. So uh, the point is, guys. And, and gals, is that it, it's worth what the what the what you can show it's worth, what the number, not what you think it's worth or what you hope it's worth, but what the actual raw data says it's worth. So I'm going to show you today how you can effectively uh, make sure that you you got your price that you want. And regardless, uh, you have to put your your emotions aside, and you have to think the way an appraiser thinks, because an appraiser is not thinking the way you're thinking if you're thinking with your emotions. You have to approach everything like what will an appraiser think in this situation? And that's the best way. That's your rule of thumb. That's the best way that you're going to get your price. So another reason, Rosario, um, that you don't get your price is because an appraiser comes in and he, he has no idea of, of values in the area and he's going to pick the wrong appraisals. And stay tuned, guys, because we're going to go cover that. We're going to show you how to make sure that an appraiser picks the right appraisals, uh, the right comps rather. So uh, that that's critical because um, a lot of these appraisers get paid very little, and they're to them it's just a job, and they just they come in and just grab whatever they can off the internet and, and off the MLS and just slap it together. And when they're only making a, you know, uh, some of the appraisers get paid well, some get paid half of, of what other appraisals do, and so they they have a little bit of an attitude and they. Their, their thought process as well. You know what? Um, this is just a job, but I'm not really getting paid well, so I'm just going to put it together. I could care less. 
So you have to you have to you can shut that down. Um, you can shut that down by uh, by having all the facts and giving him the facts. The more work you do on the on the appraisal prep work, the better your your chances are of getting the your price point. You want to do as much work uh, as much of the appraisal work appraisers work ahead of time. Make his job so easy. He, not only is he going to thank you, but you're going to get your, your price point. So another. Oh, What's that? Sorry, sorry. No, really quick, because um, I mean, there are times where an appraisal comes in low. Right. And just in and I, I'm just going to I'm just going to simplify this for everybody, just in case you're a new user and just coming on. Right. When when you go and rehab a property, you're, you're going to buy it for, you know, X, you're going to rehab it. That's your Y. And then you're going to sell it for Z. When um, you're going to go sell it for Z, whatever that price is, that end buyer is going to require an appraisal, whether they're going FHA, conventional, whatever. The bank wants to confirm that that property is really worth what it's under contract for. So they're going to send an appraiser through there to confirm the number. OK, sure. and that appraiser is going to look at the work you did. They're going to look at all the data, like what Frank said. They're going to look at the data, which are the comparable sales in that in that vicinity. And they're going to confirm and say, yes, the property is worth this. So now the bank is willing to lend on it. Or they're going to say, nope, it's not worth that because of the, you know, the quality of the work or because the value is just not in that area for, for what you're trying to sell it for. Um, so I just want to clarify that. but. Are there times, Frank, that you've seen, because I, I know I've seen this, where an appraisal comes back low because the work's just not there? You know, somebody put lipstick on a pig. Well, absolutely. And, you know, a lot of times, so what, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm going to cover this. Uh, I'll touch on it a little later, too, in our, our interview. But a lot of times it's, you know, it's based on really what a buyer is willing to pay for it as well, too. So buyers are are... You know, the uh, buyers are, are, even though it's a seller's market, buyers are looking for value. And if you uh, slap a rehab together, uh, buyers won't offer on the house or they won't offer the, 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 the premium dollar on the house. They're going to offer thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 less and your property is going to sit for a while. So that's why it's important to do the correct work and to do a really solid rehab work because you're in competition with other investors out there as well, too. And so, um, yes. Um, that, you know, appraisers also look at that as well, too. Appraisers will also devalue a property based uh, on the condition. And so you may think you're cutting corners and you, you've got everybody fooled. But when it comes to the appraiser, um, the appraiser will look at the, at the work and compare it with other rehabs and they will make adjustments accordingly. Um, I will cover that um, a little bit more in detail. Uh, but, yeah, that's a great point. So a lot of people think, well, you know what? Um, hey, look, I'm greedy, uh, or I need to get this amount of return, or or I need to, I bought wrong, so I need to pass my my buy off. You know, and I I hear this a lot too. You know, somebody will buy wrong, and they come to me, and they're like, well, I'm not going to do all this work because I bought this wrong. I'm like, that's your fault. I said, look, you you made a mistake. You you can't pass your your mistake on a consumer because the consumer is not going to. Uh, it, they're not going to uh, buy it at that price, and 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 an appraiser is not going to appraise it at that price because you don't have the right dollar amount in, in into the uh, uh, into the property. And you know, one of the things we do for Zarios, we um, we will at, we will give them a sheet of, of of the work we did and the and the dollars that we spent. So you want to dive in? Now? Yeah, I can you dive in. Dive yeah, let's okay. dive in. Let's dive in the price. So, how do you best figure out what price a property is worth? Okay, now here's one of the things you got to be careful of. A lot of people think, well, um, I, I got it. I've got a a, um, a a realtor, and this realtor's got my back. Well, the realtor may have your back, but they not they they may not be uh, educated. They may not know how an appraiser thinks. Here's how an appraiser thinks. Appraiser is going to look at the comps and he's going to look he or she's going to look six months back and if they can find a, a high, they can find three uh, comps that have closed uh, that are comparable they're going to use those comps 
Now, what happens is a lot of uh, agents or, or investors will look back a year or even further back to justify their price points. And uh, then when it comes time to sell the property, uh, they're out of luck because uh, the appraiser is going to say, look, I got to go back six months. As a matter of fact, when you're buying a property, you also need to realize that those properties that are at the six month mark will be off the radar. If, if there's others that are closing. So what we like to do is we like to look at properties that are, that are a month old uh, and properties that are uh, a deal pendant and make sure that there's a, that if there's a trend to keep the prices the same or a, an upward trend. So then we know we're safe and we can count on those comps when it, when it comes time for us to finish the property, put it on a market, resell it and close. Um, what's important also Rosario is the style of house. So, you know, a lot of people think, well, Hey, this house, this Jordan sold or this, this bungalow sold in the, uh, in this uh, zip code. So therefore I, uh, I've got a Georgian, which is, you know, Georgians are, are <coughs> excuse me, sig significantly smaller, especially in the basement. So they're going to be worth less. And so people don't realize um, an appraiser is going to think I need to compare apples with apples, not apples with oranges. So I need, uh, they will look at the style a appraiser will go back and look, try to get within six months, uh, similar styles. If not, you know, if it's a one story, they'll try to find a one story style house. For example, if it's a ranch and there are no ranches, they'll look for one story uh, bungalows and they'll use that as comps. Um, another thing they look for is exterior. On the, especially on the south side, uh, it's, it's a big difference between a frame and, and a brick. You know, usually it's somewhere between 10 to 15,000. Depends on the appraiser uh, that's involved. Um, another, um, so another thing I mentioned was was the time frame is critical. Um, sometimes an appraiser, and, and this is where you have to interview appraiser ahead of time. We'll get into that in a little bit. But you know, some appraisers will go back six months. Some will go. Some will um, will go all the way back till they find the exact same style of house, and it may be a year and a half. So there's a way to combat that, which I'll get into uh, in a minute. But I'm, what I'm what I'm just right now talking about is is what determines uh, what an appraiser looks at, how how an appraiser thinks, uh, location. So a lot of appraisers have this rule of thumb thing: the property's got to be within a mile radius, and they say that's gospel. Well, it's not gospel. It's a uh, Fannie Mae says it's merely a suggestion. Appraisers think, oh well, this is a law. That's where you have to talk to people to make sure ahead of time that they understand. A lot of times I'll have a property that's 1.0 mile away from the property. So I will talk to the appraiser ahead of time and say, look, you know, are we going to have a problem with this? Because I'll pull up the, uh, the FHA directive to show you that it's merely a suggestion. So um, square footage is another issue. So you need to know, uh, Rosario, ahead of time, you need to find out. I always interview appraisers ahead of time. So let's say I've got three comps that are, there's a dis, uh, disparity in um, the, the square footage. I want to know what they're going to, I will interview them and say, what, you know, what do you, uh, what do you use for basis square footage on the south side and on a, a lot of areas on the north side, it's in the north side to 50 $50 per square foot. Per square so that's foot. Not a whole How much? Lot. Sorry, it, it cut out a lot. What is it? 40 to 50? Yeah, 40 to $50. 40 to $50 a square foot. Okay. Is that my, is that my, my echo? Um, it, just keep going. I'm sure it's, I mean, it cut out a little bit on my side, but it's fine. So you said they're, they're coming in at 40 to $50 a square foot. Yeah, That's how so, they're, they're breaking it down. Yeah. So you need to realize that because, what, let's say you've got a property that is um, that is your, your let's say your house is about 500 square feet more, and you want um, you you want to get forty thousand dollars more for it, and let's yeah. and you talk to the appraiser, he's only going to give you forty dollars a square foot. Then five uh, five thousand times forty um, is going to only net you out twenty thousand dollars more. So you need to, you know that's why it's important you need to know ahead of time. Or even when you're pricing out a property, you're buying it, 
these are, these are important things. So when you're not, when you're not at a property to buy, you need to be looking at the tops, but you need to be looking at the, the, the variances in the tops. You're not looking at the, a lot of people think, oh, wow, this house on the block sold for uh, 200000 so mine should be worth 200000 but, but guess what? My house that I just bought, 5000 or is um, 500 square feet less. So I'm not going to get that value. Yeah. What that's about basements? Gotta, that's where I got to do the calculation. What about basements? You see these guys pulling a lot. I mean, because we see that quite quite a bit on our side, where the basement square footage is included on the MLS. Yeah. See, so that gets into uh, so that that gets into um, an illusion that a lot of realtors um, they, they they put you're not you're not supposed to put the square footage in. That's not ethical. That's not ethical. The, the, the reason why they do that was our they want to fool the uh, buyers. It, and so the, also it'll show up on a search. So let's say the house is really 1,500 square feet, but I add another 1,500 in. Uh, say, a big, say, say it's a brick ranch, it's 1,500 square, square feet, and I say it's 3,000 because I'm adding in the basement uh, because it's finished. So now let's say I'm a buyer. I'm searching for something for 2,500 square feet. I will see that where I normally wouldn't see it. However, it's not a true above grade 3,000 square feet uh, home. So an agent could get fined for that, and they also can get sued for that. So you got to be real careful when you misrepresent a property. I mean, I understand why a, uh, why a buyer's agent does it. Uh, they do it to, to get on uh, more Internet searches, but it, it's dangerous on many levels, as I mentioned. And also, what happens is the assessor's office will pick up on it, and then they will change the information. So the the, buy, the buyer buying the home is going to get into a really nice little, um, a really nice little uh, um, surprise when their tax bill gets when they get reassessed. They're no yes, longer yeah. the then they have to go protest their their bill. That's you know, but in in the meantime, they're going to at least have at least one year of overpaying their their property taxes because the agent. Uh, wrote, uh, put in false information, and the, and the Cook County Assessor's Office always checks the MLS, and they're always they're always looking for money. So uh, that that's a bad deal. Um, you know, uh, uh, some other things to, uh, on valuation, price valuation, is when you uh, is an appraiser. This is how an appraiser thinks: a half bath, they'll give anywhere from twenty five hundred to five thousand um, dollars, and a full bath, uh, double that. Now, if you go into luck in the luxury areas, it gets a lot higher than that. Fireplaces, typically, the uh, an appraiser will give a, a credit of or deduct, depending on whether you have it or you don't have it, five thousand dollars. Two car garage um, is anywhere, believe it or not, is anywhere from five thousand to thirteen thousand dollars. That's been the normal range. I mean, I've seen it. I, I've seen some appraisers go up around eighteen thousand for a two car garage, but the normal is between five and thirteen thousand dollars. Again, you need to ask. You know, you need to interview a when you're getting ready to give the appraiser comps. You have really no idea if you just run the, the the comps. You have no idea what the adjustments are. So you need to know ahead of time what an appraiser is going to uh, is going to ask for. So you have a better idea of you uh, you you can choose the better comps to support your value. Uh, bedrooms above ground, Rosario, an appraiser is going to give anywhere from two to five thousand dollars. Each appraiser is a little bit different. Below grade, on the average, they give uh, two thousand dollars for every ba every bedroom in the basements. An average patio size of uh, like fifteen by ten, we usually see about uh, uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of about four thousand for uh, for an adjustment. Finished basement, we see on the average of about fifteen dollars a square foot. So, you know, in other words, a thousand thousand dollars or thousand square foot basement is going to net you about fifteen grand. Um, some variables, some variables that that need to be taken in consideration also, um, and it just 
blows me away that, that people don't take this in consideration when they when they buy a, a house. Like I've got someone that's giving me a listing right now, Rosario, and it's a single family house. It's the only single family house on that block. And it's in the middle of a block. There's all these huge apartment buildings. And so you could imagine who's going to want to buy that house. There's not going to be a lot of people on this planet to go yeah. and buy this house. So that's going to that's going to end up selling for probably forty fifty thousand dollars less than what it's worth. So it works both ways, though. If you're using that for comp, the the appraiser will also make an adjustment based on that information. They will make a adjustment if it's on a busy street. Usually, we get about a ten thousand dollar variance either way if your property is on a busy street. So if you buy on a busy street, be prepared to get a deduction for it. Or if you're using a comp. You could ask for a uh, an adjustment because the cop is on a on a busy street. Um, and you know other things that aren't necessarily dealing with appraisals, but deal deal with rese reselling your property on a timely basis and getting the value from a buyer as well. Too is uh, if you have low ceilings in the attic or in the basement. There's going to be a lot, of buy, a lot of buyers that can't afford it. So your buyer base actually goes down. So you're going to get less people buying the property, which means you're going to get more, more market time and a lower offer coming in. So keep that in mind. If you're looking at a property, you think that you have the exact house that's sold down the street, you could be wrong because you're, you're, it may be built a little bit differently with ceiling heights. And, you're, um, and also keep in mind, too, so some, uh, some of these staircases were built – uh, very narrow. They're only about 30 inches wide. So if you if you finish an attic and you got a 30 inch wide uh, with you uh, you got with a U shaped staircase, you have to rebuild that staircase. Otherwise, that's going to directly affect the value of the property. Now, some other issues that are that are extremely important, Rosario, is um, you may have seen an appraisal come back where they devalued the property because because your seller is paying concessions. They're going to pay closing cost, a closing cost credit. Okay. Um, Fannie Mae has a directive that says if, the, if it's common for the area that to, uh, to have sellers' concessions paid, then you do not have to discount the, uh, uh, the, the property based on the concessions. Uh, the Fannie directive is 301. Point zero three. You can look it up. You can uh, um, you can check, look it up on Google, and um, you can see what I'm talking about. Or if you want to call me directly, I can send you the, the link to the directive. But I've I've overturned so many appraisals because of that. You know, so let's say all three are paying like five thousand in concessions. I'll shoot that directive to the appraiser, and he, and he makes the adjustments. Um, another critical thing. <coughs> Excuse me. How many times have you had a your first appraisal is coming great, then your second appraisal comes in low? And you're like, geez, you know how you know. And so what we do is what we do to combat that now is we we get a copy of the first appraisal. We can't give the appraiser the copy, but we'll give them all the uh, uh, the comps that they use, the adjustments they use, so they can uh, they. But it, that's one way to get around it. The other way is if the damage is already done and the second appraisal comes in, Rosario, and it's 5% or less, um, there is an FHA rule. This is for FHA financing because they, because it applies to, to, uh, to the 180-day rule where if you have a property within 180 days and when you bought it, um, you have to get two appraisals. The second appraisal comes in a 5% or less, Wait, can you can you can you explain that? Because I, I think guys that are listening, why would they need a second appraisal? So um, FHA has a rule uh, based on uh, there was a lot of illegal uh, stuff that was going on um, a, a while back, and uh, so what they they did is they created a rule to prevent um, bad appraisals from sneaking through. So what they do is they require a second appraisal and um, the, uh, the second appraisal um, is required if you, 
um, if you buy, sell, and rehab a house, and you have a, uh, uh, you're selling it for, I think it's more than 100% of what you bought it for. But I'm not sure on that. I don't. I'm not sure on that percentage. But somewhere is around there. Basically, any house that buy that you buy in rehab is going to requ- that that goes FHA is going to require a second appraisal if it's sold. <coughs> excuse me. Within 180 days of when you purchase it. Okay. So that being said. Um, the problem comes with, you know, you have two chances instead of one chance of having a problem with appraisal. And a lot of times I've seen in the past, I've seen the second appraisal come in low. So what you want to do, once you get your first appraisal, you request a copy of the first appraisal for the mortgage company before you do the second appraisal. And then you can arm, get all that information, gather, give it to the second appraisal. If that can't be done or isn't done, then understand if the appraisal comes in 5%. So in other words, if you have a $200,000 house and the second appraisal comes in um, for $190,000, uh, uh, 5% less, if you didn't know the rule, you're, you're coughing up 10 grand. If you know the rule, you just saved yourself $10,000. And I'm sure mm-hmm. a lot of people that do buy them can, can look back and say, man, I wish I, I, wish I knew that rule. I went, you know, and the the problem is most mortgage companies don't know that rule. I will bring that rule up to them, you know, and it's uh, it's FHA 24 CFR 2.03.37A. Uh, it is an FHA rule. So a lot of people are not aware of it, including mortgage companies. So when that every time I show it to a mortgage company, they're like, oh, wow, I didn't even know that existed. You know, except the guys that I use. They know they know what's in play, but the ones that, that aren't aware of it, um, we we have no choice but to rebuttal you the second appraisal or take the value. Take and a lot of times you know sellers are in a hurry and they want to just take the value. So so this is a quick fix uh, to to uh, save an investor a lot of money. And guys that are doing volume, if you run across this, you know you can save five thousand here, ten thousand here, fifteen thousand there. It, it it's uh, uh, it's ginormous. It, it adds up, you know, especially yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Rosari, as you know, with um, with numbers so tight these days, uh, this makes a big difference. Yeah, especially yeah, when you're doing five or five or five or five or five 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 fifty yeah. grand. I mean, it's, it's, it's a lot huge, of money. Huge. It's a lot of money. Here's another fun fact, guys. Um, <laughs> you, you hear loan officers say, "Oh, well, appraisals." We got you because appraisals, are, FHA appraisals are good for six months. Negative. They're good for four months, not six months. So if you do an appraisal and you got, say you got royally screwed, uh, you, there's a couple things you can do. We can switch it over uh, to com- uh, conventional. We Obviously, we can rebuttal the appraisal. We can switch it to conventional because there's so many competing conventional programs out there, 3%. You know, as long as the buyer is willing to play, we can do that. VA is six months, though. So if a VA okay. comes back, you're stuck for six months. But newsflash, FHA is not six months. And a lot of loan officers don't know that because they changed the rules in 2010. A lot of, lo- a lot of loan officers don't pay attention to that. So they, they play hardball with you. You're going to have to take this deal because it's good for six months. So anyways, um, what is, you know, what's the solution? You know, how, how do we, you know, how do we, how, how do we beat uh, you know, these, these appraisers at, at making uh, mistakes. So, you know, uh, one of the things that I, I do uh, when we get a call from an appraiser is I check for, and this is a term, uh, an appraiser ter- a term, I check for geographic competency. So what happens is, well, I'll ask, uh, you know, I'll, and I'll have a conversation with the appraiser, talk to them and, you know, say, hey, man, have you ever been down to this neck of the woods? And you know, and how often do you come down here and get a feel? So in other words, if this guy hasn't never been down there or hasn't been around for a couple of years, more than likely he's not going to have the value. So I have a nice conversation, nice conversation, real friendly with him, hang up, call the mortgage company and say, um, we don't want this appraiser because he doesn't have geographic competency. 
And if you and you can do that, technology, they, appraisers and mortgage companies understand that terminology. And I said, this guy does not have geographic competency because he's never been down here. So we want you to spin the wheel and, and, and get us another appraisal. See, mortgage companies can't choose the appraisals. They have they may have their own AMC appraisal management company, or they may go outside to to hire a, a appraisal management company. And so uh, what that is is that's uh, that that's the people that they have to go to to order an appraisal. Now they can they can call the company and say, hey, we need an appraiser out here, and then the appraisal management company assigns somebody in their pool. But if the if the appraiser does not know the area, you do not have to accept that appraisal. And a lot of times when you, if you get somebody coming from Barrington, uh, no offense, Rosario, but if you get somebody coming uh, from Barrington going, going to Chatham, more than likely they probably are clueless with the area. So you want to make sure that you have somebody that knows the area because that will better your chances for getting a good appraisal. Um, again, you know, what I mentioned earlier too, so when you when you talk to the appraiser, you want to and you you have your comps in front of you, you with the different variances, whether it's square footage or whether it's bedrooms in a basement, or you want to kind of you want to find out ahead of time what um, what they use for numbers for variances, so that you can prepare to give them documents when you meet them. Um, so when you meet the appraisal, whether it's um, electronically or in person, um, these are the documents that you want to have. This is critical. You want to have the contract, and you want to circle or or highlight the uh, the price. Because what ha here's some of those things I've seen in the past, Rosario. Appraisers have got a uh, got like a, the initial contract, which was the the start bid, which was not the agreed bid. So it may be so, fifty. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. Initial, so they've got the initial offer. That's what they got. Yes, and and it wasn't the agreed upon offer, so it may be fifteen grand less. So guess what? They're going to appraise it based on um, the the contract they have. And then when you go back to tell them that's incorrect, they're going to like, well, my bad, too bad, so sad. You're stuck with that. I'm not changing it. But a lot of times, wow. appraisers, yeah, a lot of times appraisers will not. They they don't want to bring anything to light. Because they're under the gun and they're being audited all the time. There's this like the government has a national uh, audit system in place where they're constantly auditing appraisers. And if an appraiser gets written up twice uh, for a bad appraiser, they're out of business. They can't appraise anymore. It's getting really, really bad. That's why it's this. This is such an important topic that you have all your information, all your ducks in a row. Because if a mistake is made, appraisers are very, very gun shy to make any any changes because they don't want to get in trouble they don't want to look upon be looked upon as a uh, incompetent appraisal um when you meet an appraiser so you bring the contract highlight it or if you if the appraiser doesn't want to meet you you just send send me the docs then circle it circle the price and and make sure you leave a note saying this is the agreed upon price all right then you also want to highlight or circle appliances central air Whatever that isn't in the property right now, that's going to be added in later, so that he knows, so that he doesn't deduct value. So I've had, you know, appraisers where they've deducted because we didn't have the central air, and and we we highlighted it on the MLS uh, listing. So um, and, and they deducted it, and uh, they did uh, they refused to um, uh, to to give us credit for it. So now we also put it on the contract. We write. We highlight it on the contract, so when they're looking through it, they're going to they're going to make the changes. So you highlight it on the MLS uh, listing that you give him of the property and also the contract. That's critical. Um, hand him a survey, make his job easier. Um, you want to, now. Here's here's the fun part: is you had a good comps and bad comps. So there's always going to be comps in the area that that can be chosen that can really screw your value up. So you what you have to do is you have to take those comps and you have to say, okay, the, this is not a good comp because this was a short sale or this was a, uh, this was, there was inferior work, whatever the reason was. Sometimes it's, sometimes it's a fire sale. And because I do so much volume and I know 
uh, most of the agents in, in the uh, in the industry. I, I may I, sometimes I might call an agent and say, "Hey, how come this thing sold for fifteen grand less?" And they, you know, they tell me, "Hey, this guy is getting out of the business. He just, you know, he's sick of it, or he's tired of rehabbing, and he just wanted to get rid of it and move on and retire." So, you know, I'll talk to the agent and say, "Look, the appraiser may call you on this. Uh, are you okay with that?" Because we need to protect the values in our industry, so the agent gets it, and it, you know, it's the, the, these are this is all high level stuff, Rosario. This is, you know, I I don't take anything lightly. I don't just, you know, just uh, show up and 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 say hello to the appraiser. The, it, I'm going to do everything I can for my my clients to make sure that they're going to get the best chance to get their value. Uh, another great thing to have is a list of improvements with the cost. So, like you said earlier, Rosario, uh, is there a big difference with uh, uh, with a, a, a rehab that's that's a lipstick on a pig? Absolutely. And and invest yeah. well. Yeah. Once I give him that list, then then him he or she that he or she can uh, has their back covered. So if they get audited, they can say, hey, I gave them this price because they put one hundred twenty thousand dollars in rehab in this cost in this property. That's why it's worth X amount of dollars. Um, here's a big one. <laughs> this is so Rosario, we were talking about the square footage earlier. The a lot of times the Cook County Assessor has a square footage wrong. So what you can do is you can go to Google Earth and you could download Google Earth and they have a measuring device. So yeah. you can measure the property from the aerial view and you can show um a um a um, appraiser that look, this is the same size building, you know, but based on the dimensions. So as long as you can you can provide proof like that, an appraiser will will take that uh, for uh, adjustments. Because if you know, like like I mentioned before, if uh, if if an agent puts the uh, doubles the uh, amount of uh, of square footage, and then Cook County Assessor says it's now double the amount, if you can prove that it really isn't, then um, the appraiser will take that as proof and they've got their back covered if they get audited. Um, or if the assessor is correct with the square footage on the comps and yours, then you can just do a printout of, of the assessor's um, information and provide that as well to him. You're, all you're doing is making his job easier. He's going to like you, you know, and he's going to give, you know, he, you'll have a better chance of getting value. He's not going to screw around with you. Um, you, as I mentioned earlier to the MLS listing sheet, Make sure you've got the MLS listing sheet with you. So if he needs to look it up, you can. Uh, he's got something to uh, refer to. Uh, another thing that's great is if you if you go above listing price and you got five six uh, uh, contracts, give them the, the give them all the multiple uh, contracts. You know, cross out the names and stuff like that. But you can show, you know, you can show that there were multiple offers and the and the the prices were driven up. Everything is done to cover the appraiser's back. If you want to, you know, push the value an extra five, ten thousand dollars, and you've got four out of five offers well over um, over list, then you increase your chances of getting that value if you provide all the multiple offers. Now, if all that stuff doesn't work, or if you if you didn't do that and you get a bad appraisal, and you um, you got to you got to rebuttal the appraisal, okay? You, then, I, I, you, I'm throwing I'm throwing the flag. I'm throwing the flag. I'm stopping you. Okay, guys, this there was so much. And just for the sake of time, I, I got to wrap this up. But, um, Frank, you dropped so much. I mean, I'm sure a lot of you. I'm sure a lot of you guys listening, your heads are spinning right now. You got to understand, Frank's, he sold thousands. He has sold thousands of properties, always amongst the top, you know, 1% in Chicago. So he's whipping a ton at you. I hope you took some good notes. Watch this again and again and again. Um, Chris Padilla, client of ours, um, he had this situation last week where he's selling a property. You know, went through and 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 did some of the things that Frank's mentioned here. Um, you know, met with the appraiser, went over the repairs that were done, had had comps with them. So 
if you guys are working with a broker that's not doing this stuff for you, you know, a lot of brokers fall into the trap where they just, they, they think the goal is to get a listing. The goal is not to get a listing. The goal is to sell your property and not just sell your property, sell it for what you're trying to get for it, right? Your target price. So if you're not working with a broker like Frank, that's going through everything, all the details, nobody's thinking about appraiser or appraisal issues or how to rebut them. I don't want to say nobody, but very few. And Frank is definitely uh, top of his class when it comes to that. So Frank, is there anything you want to bring home to wrap this up? I'm sorry. There was so much, man. You got, you got my head spinning. Uh, you know what? Um, yeah, that's a good, you know, the, the only other thing is, you know, when you, uh, uh, when you do a rebuttal, uh, you, at, you always ask for reconsideration of value and then you have to provide, show what's wrong with the, with the appraisal and provide three comps, three new comps. Um, as you can see, Rosario, um, I'm very high level. Whatever I do, I'm very high level. Um, you know, there's a reason why we close so many deals. Uh, there's a reason why I do hundreds of transactions every year. I'm not a list and leave guy. Um, I spend thousands of dollars a month on, uh, on buyer's leads. Um, I have a website that generates a ton of leads because of my branding. Um, I have a team of 12 agents now that we do open houses. We do, we, we not only do, uh, uh, you know, just a regular open house. We call around, invite neighbors, invite uh, people in, in a four block radius, uh, to come visit. So we have, we're very successful with our open houses. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, I have, usually have over a hundred signs in the ground. So we generate a ton of calls on a daily basis because of the signs. Uh, we do drone videos or listings. Um, I have like what I call my underground MLS. So I have agents that I send uh, my my list of uh, properties out and some of the upcoming properties. And so sometimes we'll, we'll get lucky and we'll, we'll uh, sell a property before it hits the market. And uh, we've been having a lot more success with that lately. So that's cool. But we, we send that list out to uh, to agents as well, too, of stuff getting ready to hit the market. So uh, the big thing with me, too, is branding. So a lot of, you know, I throw some on the MLS. It's just I, a lot of times I'll have a bazillion showings right away but because uh, my my name is my, my brand is uh, I've been in the business for 34 years. And uh, people, you know, a lot of buyers know what we do out there and they they want to buy a Frank Montreal home and uh, they equate my name uh, with quality. So that's, that's what we do, Rosario. And you will see by this uh, today uh, that I'm not, I'm not your average a agent. I'm not even a good agent. I'm a superior agent. I take my job seriously. I go above and beyond. I'm, I'm obsessive, compulsive, compulsive, obsessive. I'm always going to be getting better every day too. I love what I do. So that's who I am. Guys. I've known Frank for 15 years. A lot of Click Invest users are already using Frank uh, on the back end. Here's his information. Please reach out to him. Uh, as as I'm sure you noticed in this in this webinar, I mean, <laughs> the guy's got a lot in his head and uh, a lot of experience and a lot of knowledge. So, Frank, I mean, you're cool if people reach out to you directly and just pick Absolutely. your brain a little bit. By all means, awesome. All right. Well, always a pleasure, man. Thanks for coming on. And uh, I really greatly appreciate it, dude. You're you're always a blessing to have on and, and, and bring so much value to the Click Invest community. So thanks, dude. Thanks, Rosario. Thanks for having me. You got it. Have a great day. Thanks, brother. You too. Thanks, guys. Check this out. Watch the replay if you didn't catch it all. OK, I know there was a ton of, of information, but take fr uh, take down Frank's info there. Reach out to him directly. Watch this again and again and again. Thanks again, guys. Bye-bye. All righty then.